Hey guys, welcome to our channel. This is Emi Chicken from Team Pandori. Today we've got another box. Let's smash it open. Boom. We have another mini PC by the company Meal. Meal are concentrating on fanless PC designs. Let's hope this one can fill my stomach. This has the Intel J4125 ABCD EEFG in it, aiming at the budget market. Let's see how it holds up to the competition. First thing we see is a manual. As I'm in Japan, I'll get the Japanese version. It's a quick start guide showing you what the ports do and how to install an M2 SSD drive. At the size of a calculator, it's slightly heavy. Two stickers on the top, easy to remove. This warning label just says, this can get hot. It's fanless, so that's to be expected. Three USB 3s on the side. One USB 3, micro SD, 3.5 audio, two HDMI ports, and a tiny switch. USB-C for power only. At the end, one gigabit network port. Kensington. On the back, two holes for a mounting plate, which can be found in the box. Yaw. Power adapter, USB-C, two amp, 12 volt, at 24 watts. I'll be using the US style plug. And screws for the mount. Nothing else. For today's size comparison, we will use a PlayStation 3 pad. I'm sure you've used one of these before. It looks a bit like this. Doctor Who in the jungle hey! with the specs. We've seen a few systems with the same chip this year. This one differs from the rest by being rather small, good connectivity, fanless, and also having an extra M.2 slot. We can add an NVIDIA 1060 if we needed to. We could place the unit next to the monitor, and it looks quite smart. If we have vase mount holes, we could hook it to the back of a monitor. Tidy. When you first boot, you'll be asked a few questions. Select your hand baggage. And then refuse Skynet. This will keep you safer in the years to come. We've got Windows 10 Pro, updated to 20H2. Running on 8GB DDR4 single channel. We'll use Ninite as always to download our free applications. And then go shopping on the AliExpress. Oh, that looks good. Oh man. Flipping heck. LibreOffice works just fine. Get your kids doing the homework. Or if you want to do some accounting in something like Excel. Or YouTube in 4K. This is hooked up to the Ethernet network. If you're multitasking while streaming 4K, it will slow down. You could also use this PC to run Netflix. And yeah, might watch this tonight. Sounds great. A few benchmarks. The scores sit where it should for this chipset. Great news. Crystal disk mark with Shizuku. Shizuku with no malware to report. We had no issues with the Bluetooth. Use this 8-bit DO controller. It worked fine in both Windows and Batocera. We'll do some game testing now on Steam. First one, Among Us. Donated! Oh yeah, Zool Redimension. Full 60 FPS at 1080p. Streets of Rage 4 runs at an average 37 frames per second at 1080p. Now for the super modern 3D games, here's Quake. We're looking at around 40 to 50 frames per second. That's at 1080p. And there seems to be a slight bit of controller delay, but that may be the game itself. At 720p, Team Fortress 2 gets around 30 to 40 FPS average. The onboard GPU becomes a bottleneck for the system.
A better way to play more demanding games on this PC is to stream it through the network from a gaming PC. Here we have Tekken 7 and King of Fighters 14 with next to zero controller latency. Just make sure you use Cat 6 or Cat 7 Ethernet cable for this. Now to some emulation, here's PSP, Outrun 2006 1080p. At all settings on high we're getting 60 FPS with some dips to around 55. If we put it to 3 times resolution we'll get 100% all the way through. Same for Tekken 6, 3 times resolution, perfect. Dreamcast, Dead or Alive 2, runs great. After stressing the machine with all the games, here are the temperatures. And as expected, it is a little higher than active cooling. The BIOS is fairly comprehensive. Lots of options here to choose from. And from here, we can choose to boot from a USB hard drive. I installed Batacera to a USB hard disk. We'll select that here. And off we go to Retro Gaming Heaven. Batacera can be seen as a front end to all of your games. And today, we will plug the Pandori magazine. It's totally free, and links are down below. From Emu Chicken and Dave Perry's list, Speedball 2, Commodore Amiga. Another one from Dave Perry's list, Ridge Racer. Or perhaps he meant this Ridge Racer. Z Ridge Racers Z for the PSP. This is on 1080p. Skip frame. Checkpoint right ahead. Ready for night. We'll move now to the PlayStation 2 with King of Fighters 98. King of Fighters Maximum Impact. This machine struggles with 3D games for the PlayStation 2. Here's a game from Matt's list. Marvel vs. SNK... No. M Marvel Capcom 2. Yes. He should have chose a King of Fighters game. This is King of Fighters 11, a Thomas Wave. From the Joho's list, Mario Kart 8 for the Super Nintendo. Runs perfectly. Bit of Mario Kart 64. Mario Kart Double Dash for the GameCube. Very surprised at the performance here. Pretty much 60 FPS. Now for the worst Mario Karts. We. We, we indeed. We. We. Hold your Wii for a Wii. Yeah, that was a thing. Look it up. The game you should be playing on the Wii is this one. Rhythm Tengoku. Or Rhythm Heaven. Fever. Which runs great. Oh. 
from Retro Game Corpse's list. Doom. I still love the vanilla Doom a lot, but Claustrophobia 1024 is probably my favorite mod. This one will put you in very small maps that are super cramped and just full of me. I love it. In Robson Smeg 48's list, Outrun. This game runs flawlessly on MAME. Then if you configure them, you can use a wheel controller. Let's open this bugger! So there's four screws at each corner. Camera, ca camera stand, ca camera, camera stand. Opens up fairly easily. Looks extremely clean. The box in the middle will be the EMC, and over here we've got the CMOS battery. The little box over here is for the Wi-Fi. Everything else is underneath. There are a few additional screws to make sure it's tight and the CPU can expel the heat out of the case. At the very top we've got the M2 slot, we can use that for the eGPU if we wish, or an additional SSD. Two boxes underneath that will be the memory, and then this large green thing with gunk on it, that'll be the CPU. I'd like to see a bit more gunk on that. Now to the pros and cons. Silent, small, stylish, and with decent connectivity options. On the flip side, a little expensive, and the case does get hot. Maybe it needs more goo. While we peruse a bucket of lobsters, who is this for? It's a decent family PC. Windows is responsive, and if you had this under your TV, it'd be a great little box to accompany it. You could stream AAA titles from your gaming PC, and you'd be good. If you wanted to attach a fast graphics card to this, you could via eGPU. But it'd cost you. In conclusion, we actually like this product. As it's stylish, you do pay a little bit extra, but Apple users have been doing this for years. Before we leave, I want to thank all our patrons. Thank you for sticking around. The new Pandora is on its way, it's being written as we speak. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the box. Bye! So, what do I think of the J4125 chip? Well, I think it's probably the best chip that you can get in a sub $200 mini PC. I found that for the most part, it can probably play about 85 to 90% of GameCube games, and it can play PSP at about four times resolution or 1080p, but that's probably its upper limit.